How's it going, YouTube? My name is Bobby. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a little while since I've been posting videos. Life kind of took over, wasn't really doing it. But I'm back and I want to give you a little walk around of our 1989 Mazda B2200. We got this little pickup truck in June. We've been driving it around about six months now. Um, it's a nice little truck. It starts every time it runs around, but we're going to be motor swapping it next week. So I wanted to give you a little walk around of it while it's still in its stock purest form before we start tearing it apart. Um, it is a six and a half foot bed, regular cab truck. The 2.2, hence the B2200 name. It's a five speed. Um, it's a two wheel drive. Um, it's an SE5, whatever that means. I don't know because it doesn't really have many options. But it's relatively rust free. The body is not the greatest. It's got a lot of whiskey dents, but we don't really care because it's a shop truck. Um, it has some rot right here with the fent, the wheel well. The bed is kind of mint. Um, the bumper is hanging off all dinged up well, we're gonna rip that bumper off actually and we're gonna um put the uh caps on the back for the frame it almost looks like a roll pan i think the european models had those caps you can get them on ebay like a hundred bucks but i kind of want to get them more cheaper than that so i'm gonna keep looking but um the bed holds a lot of stuff i got some um door panels in there right now i gotta bring to a guy later today um holds a lot of stuff for a six and a half foot bed this thing does some running around i put motors in the back of here i've done all kind of stuff um I painted the uh, red there. That's why it's two different colors of red. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Um, I had a Walmart spray can of, it was like $5, of candy apple red. The previous owner, I think, did the cap corners on it. And it was still in primer. And I wanted it to be all one color. So I sprayed it. And then I was like, you know what? I want to see how much of the truck I can cover and see what it comes out like. And I did the doors and it looks like crap. I don't care. And um, we're going to probably leave it alone maybe we'll paint it later who knows but um we don't really care about a little patina i also painted the wheels white they were originally um when i got it painted in rhino liner black and it was terrible and um i tried to paint them and it, it doesn't it's flaking off and but I, I don't care we're changing those wheels too um tires i got from a mustang that we had i don't think we had anything into those tires um, I think they came on a car. So tires are pretty much free. I got $5 in spray paint for the white, five for the red, five for the black for the front bumper because it was gray when I got it. It was fading. Looks way better like this. Um, $20 for the minty license plate at a swap meet. 14 bucks a piece on the headlight bulbs. Um, I'm not adding it up. I don't feel like it. But I have less than $300 invested in this truck. 200 of it was the gauge cluster um the rest of it is less than a hundred dollars um i'll show you the frame while i'm out here and then i'm going to graduate to the interior and under the hood um the frame is pretty minty body mounts look good frame's got no rod on it i've inspected it front to back the exhaust is a little rigged, but that don't matter. The only place on this truck that has rot, aside from that stupid stuff right there, is everybody says that they rot in this spot right here in particular. And this one is no exception. It's on both sides, but it's really not that bad. Um, or it's actually not as bad as it looks. Um, it's right here. I think somebody sprayed over this. Whatever, it doesn't leak water in the rain. It's not structural. The other place it's rotted is right here on the core support. But I think I can fix that. We're gonna tear it apart before we do the motor anyways. We're gonna try to get it down to the frame up front here so we can mock up the motor and see how we can make it work. Um, tell you a little bit more about the motor swap later on. But that's the underneath it's pretty clean it's got some surface rust it's been in rhode island its whole life um i actually have the original um 
title for the truck because we don't need titles on old stuff so the title is still there and um it's registered to me but the title is open and it's from 89 and it's from the dealership i think and there's some other stuff maybe i'll show you later but um it's pretty clean underneath it's not perfect but it's not all rotted considering it's been in rhode island all its life this is one of the quirks right here this falls off on me all the time every time you open and close the door um graduating onto the interior start with the door panels the door panels are pretty mint it's a crank window truck and this window gets caught right about there and doesn't want to crank up any further unless you go like this hold it down and then crank it my mustang is the same way i gotta figure out probably off the track or something who cares um seat's got a big old rip right there we don't really care though. we just sit on it anyways maybe i'll get a mexican blanket for it maybe i'll put some racing seats in it who knows can't predict the future behind the seats in these trucks actually have quite a bit of room i have a lot of stuff back there you can't tell but that's enough stuff to fill up the entire floor of the passenger side i know because that's where it all was before um so there's a lot of storage back here believe it or not you got the factory jack which is mounted right there and the handle which has its own little um hook right there or whatever you want to call that thing this is actually a truck that was optioned without rear speakers so it has this little panel right here that's painted the body color and um that covers the speaker holes where they would be there should be one on the other side too um it's got the non-sliding rear glass it's a solid one i actually like that better um graduating to the interior um this interior did not smell when i got it um even though it was kind of sitting for a while. I mean, it wasn't sitting for that long. It was driven probably once a week, but it didn't go far. And um, interior smelled nice. I cleaned it up as best I could. It's not perfect. I got my felony forest right there. So it smells okay in here. But I'll start with the gauge cluster. This gauge cluster is a tech gauge cluster, whereas the original one that was in this was just a speedometer one. It had a big speedo that went like this and it was ugly and didn't work and um i found one on ebay that had pretty much the exact same mileage this one's actually a thousand miles over what the other one was so the miles are inaccurate by a thousand but it's over so and whatever and we're gonna put a motor in it so that don't matter but um everything works i had to replace the speedometer cable that was 30 bucks um i have to rewire the clock if i wanted it to work but everything else all the gauges work um this thing tops out, sorry, dropped my camera. This thing tops out right there at 65 miles an hour. You can maybe get it up here to 75 or 80 if you're going down a hill on the highway. But other than that, this thing is painfully slow. Um, this is the dimmer switch right here, which works when it wants to work. You got your turn signal stocks right here, pretty basic. Headlights, high beams, turn signals. Um, windshield wiper, that's it, that's all you get. And one of the, my favorite things about this truck is that it has this little stupid sticker right here that tells you how to operate your turn signals in case you're an idiot, which I guess a lot of people were in the 80s. I don't know. Some people still don't know how to use blinkers, even today, especially BMW owners. Anyways, I got the speakers out of it because they were junk and I was trying to figure out what size they were. I have the speaker grade for it, so that's not missing. Um, that wire thing right there, don't look at that. Um, this is the fuse box right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this while I'm here because I'm gonna show you under the hood in a minute. Five speed, so you have the pedals. You have the old ball chiller vent right here. Everybody loves that. I wish automakers would bring that back in 2022 because my balls need some chilling. Um, this is the e-brake. It's a stick that you pull, and to put it away, you twist it and you put it back. Pretty cool. Let me see if I can. There we go. Um, it's a non-AC truck, so it just has heat. The heat all works. Everything works. The blower motor, blend door, everything works, and I love that. Um, it's got this handy dandy ashtray 
that was more important than cup holders back in the 80s and whatever this thing is i can't figure that out um shifter this is a honda shift knob that i put on the original shift knob was kind of gross so that's why i got that shift boot rubber cheesy this is an f-150 um for the transfer case i screwed it on there because it looked kind of like it needed it um glove box has my stupid stickers on it that i got at a swap meet um the old early cup holder system that mazda had the rx7s and i think most mazdas of the era had this they're the most useful thing in the world not um dome light don't work headliner got a rip we got some non-mirror visors um that door panel is pretty mint as well got my handicap plate that came with the truck that's expired but i hold on to it because i don't know why um and that's the interior it's not much else to see in here it's pretty basic which is why i don't understand what the se5 really stands for because this thing has no options um anyways i popped the hood let me show you what's under the hood All 2.2 liters, 75 or 80 horsepower of glory. Um, carbureted motor, one of the last carbureted vehicles ever made. I think I mentioned that already. Um, it has, the previous owner installed a pace setter header on it. He says he did the head and the head gasket too. I don't know, it, it doesn't run right, but I don't know why. It's got a skip, I did the plug wires, these are NGK wires and I've got a um, distributor cap that was like twelve dollars these were like i think they were 20 so that's less than 40 bucks right there um they run a little better like that but whatever these pay set of headers i guess go for some money i don't know it's got the smaller stuff is deleted so you got probably vacuum leaks right here maybe that's why it's misfiring i don't know it drives around fine it just has a skip um carburetor systems in these trucks had a computer controlled for the smog system people replace them they put the webers on and they do the pay setter header and they say it gets a little more power out of them but i'm not gonna waste my time with that because that's like 500 dollars, and for that price i can get a new motor um got my home depot battery tie down made out of a wood bracket don't judge me it was cheap um that was like i think that was less than two dollars i have into that because the bolts were like 30 cents or something so battery was good when i got it pick and pull battery i think um it's got a hydraulic clutch surprisingly um not much else to really talk about under here um non-ac so there's a bunch of room over here it's got power steering some of them didn't have power steering believe it or not this one has it thank god because i really like power steering um so the motor that we're gonna put in this is actually from a previous video i had a 1984 ford mustang svo it was sitting in that spot right there, which I have replaced with another SVO. I'll actually show you what's left of that real quick, just because it's right over here. We cut that car up. We took the motor out. The plan was originally to put the motor in that car over there, which is an 85 GT. We're going to make it an SVO clone. We started on that. Then the previous owner of this car, the one I got it from, actually passed away. And his brother called me up and he said, hey, listen, I've got five or six other cars that were his. They're all SVOs. I need them gone. So I went up there with about four grand. I picked up that one. I picked up that one. That one's an 86. That one's an 85. I have another one at the shop that has some more mods and it's actually a lot cleaner than both of these. This one's rotted. This one's a good shell, but it was V8 swapped. We pulled the motor out, put in the pace car. Um, this is what's left of the first one. Kept it because it has good towers on it cowl whatever um but we have this motor a non-ac 84 2.3 turbo with a five speed we're gonna slap in that thing and we're gonna try to make it a little more peppy than it is um we're gonna plan on doing it this week it's at christmas so we'll start probably right around christmas my brother works for the, the city so 
He's got Christmas break. He doesn't have it off, but after work, he's gonna have a relaxed schedule. So after work, we're gonna try to jam on it. Um, I'm gonna do the suspension over, probably not right away. I've talked to the guy on here who does the suspension. I'm in Rhode Island. He's also in Rhode Island. His name is KEI Fabrication. He seems like a good dude. I'm gonna go take a ride down to his shop later this week and um, see if I can get the kit for it. It's like an adapter that goes over the spindle and you put the Crown Vic hubs on it with the five lug disc brakes. You gotta do a different booster and master and I gotta get another rear end, a five lug rear end. We're gonna drop it on its nuts. I'm gonna make it nice and low. We're gonna make it the turbo. Um, I wanna take the scoop that was originally on that red car. I put another hood on it just to keep it sealed. But I have a red scoop I wanna put right where the intercooler would be. I think it'd be sick. Um, pretty much all the mods right there. We're gonna just slap it in, <clears throat> see if we can get it running. Um, drive shaft's gonna be something that's gonna hold us up, but I might just take a Fox drive shaft and cut it and weld it just to get it up the street so I can park it at my house after the, the week is over. Um, it's gonna be a fun little project. It should have a little more balls than it does. This thing is so slow on the highway. I probably said that already. It's, it's literally the chore to drive. I mean, it drives and it goes around, it does everything, but it is slow. So a little more about how I got this truck. Um, a buddy of mine owns a body shop. I do work for him here and there. And this truck was sitting around in the back of the shop. It was used by a guy that used to collect the scrap metal for him. So he'd park this truck there every week. The employees would fill it up with scrap metal and the guy would come down and he would take it to the scrap metal place, which was about a mile up the road. So this thing drove once a week for a mile and that was all it needed to do for a long time. This is as long as I can remember this truck was sitting there. And I drove it a few times. I actually did the scrap runs with them and I liked it. I was like, dude, this thing is awesome. And the guy didn't want to sell it at first because he's making money with it, whatever. Then he told us a thousand bucks and I was like, I'll probably pay a thousand bucks for it. But then my, my buddy's like, no, listen, I can get you that truck for free. He's like, just give me a little bit. I'm like, okay. I'm like, whatever. So we had a car trailer we got from the same guy. It was um, a budget trailer, I think, that somebody put a wood floor on and painted. And we had bought it from my friend. We were using it to tow cars. We got in an accident with it, actually. It flipped around on the highway and whacked us in the side of the truck. But it was relatively undamaged, but it had some issues, whatever. It needs some work. But the guy wanted to trade for it. So he is planning on using that to load up with scrap metal, too. But he doesn't have that at the shop right now because my buddy's in the middle of moving shops. So he wanted the trailer we traded him the trailer for it the trailer i don't think i paid a thousand bucks for it I, th I remember he gave us a price of a thousand bucks in the trailer when we first got it but we ended up building him a mustang that costed about two hundred dollars at first it was a shell and we put some money into it but we didn't have a lot of money into the thing we put it together out of used parts so we, we gave him that and i don't think he charged us for the trailer so let's say two hundred dollars in the trailer it, a thousand at most so even if I paid a thousand dollars for the trailer, thirteen hundred bucks—that's what you get. This thing is probably worth three to four grand. I think as it sits, I see them going for that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not selling it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But that's the story of how I got this truck pretty much for free, and I've less than three hundred dollars into it. The SVO, I got that for I think a thousand dollars at the time, or nine hundred dollars. So the motor was nine hundred dollars, and I made money off that SVO because I parted it out. So. Literally, this truck is almost positive money for me at this point. Well, the SVO was, but I take that positive and I'll carry it over with the motor and we'll say that it, we'll say that I made money in the truck. No, I don't think that's how it works. But anyways, that's the 89 Mazda B2200. That's the story of it. Um, not much else to say, I guess. I'll take another video. Probably while we're doing the motor swap, I'll do another video on the motor swap and Try to get that out as soon as possible i haven't actually posted the video of me getting the svo running yet as of right now but i do have the video edited and ready to go so by the time this video comes out you will have already seen that video i hope um but yeah this is this is the most purest form we're gonna get out of this thing thank you so much for tuning in um appreciate it appreciate any likes any subscribes any support you can hand to me Shout out to the guy, KEI Fabrication.